Military news. Russia's future submarines will be smaller and stealthier. The U.S. Navy prefers big, multi-role boats while the Kremlin builds the opposite. Russia's next generation submarines will be smaller and stealthier than Moscow's current fleet. But officials from the Rubin Design Bureau contend that the Kremlin should invest in specialized designs rather than multi-role boats. Russian designers believe that the concept of a modular submarine design is possible. However a multi-role boat would be an expensive jack of all trades but a master of none. The Russian philosophy stands in stark contrast to the U.S. Navy's doctrine of building multi-role submarines such as the Virginia-class nuclear attack submarine, which was designed to perform almost every mission with the exception of strategic nuclear deterrence. The designer's thought is never restricted. Everything can be combined and matched. Technically this is possible, but will it make sense? Quote, Igor Vilnit, general director of the Rubin Design Bureau, told the Moscow-based TASS news agency. The modular principle is reasonable. But the way I see it, it is largely applicable to specific technical means and equipment. Some devices, radio electronics and power production. Each submarine has its own task. Creating a ship capable of coping with a hundred tasks while in reality it will be performing just. One function will be costly and ineffective. Quote, the Russians are currently working on a next-generation attack submarine under the project name Husky. The new attack submarine is reportedly being developed in two variants. One version would be an interceptor similar in concept to the Alpha class or Sierra class submarines while the other would be a guided missile submarine designed to replace the Oscar the second class. One of the reasons that the Russians are already looking at next-generation replacement attack Submarines is because the new Yazan class, while extremely capable, is also extremely expensive. Moreover, construction of the eight planned Yazan class boats is taking a long time, as Center for Naval Analysis senior research scientist specializing in Russian military affairs Dmitry Gornberg had earlier told the national interest. Because the Yazan class is so expensive and takes so long to build, the Russians might need to look at alternative designs. The Russians probably have a good chance of recapitalizing their feet if they are able to design a cheaper and more producible submarine design. I can't see any reason why not, said Michael Kaufman, a research scientist specializing in Russian military affairs at Center for Naval Analysis. Dmitry and I have been arguing for a while that the Yazan class is too expensive to be realized. Past those laid down and they are unlikely to complete anymore. It is simply not a submarine that can be produced in suitable numbers. Quote, but in addition to recapitalizing its nuclear submarine fleet, the Russians have to design a successor to the Kilo class which is still an excellent boat. Despite its age, the Russians first attempt to replace the Kilo with the Lada class submarine proved to be a dead. And Moscow simply failed to design a practical air independent propulsion system or AIP. Russia also needs to figure out a workable diesel-electric design to succeed the 636. 3. Improved Kilo, and while they have several prototypes, likely four of which will ultimately become their own class of submarine, it's unclear what the ultimate decision is on AIP, Kaufman said. The Russians are currently working a design called the Kalina to succeed the Kilos. It is possible that Moscow could equip the Kalinas with an AIP. However, the Russians might also simply adopt extended capacity battery packs for its new boats. This article originally appeared at the National Interest by Dave Majumdar.
was winning in Afghanistan until the CIA began supplying Stinger missiles to the Union. The Stingers were so useful in bringing down Soviet helicopters and planes that they eventually pulled out in 1989 and the USSR crumbled into pieces. All of a sudden, the most imposing weapon of the Soviet Union was brought low by a bunch of guys holding a shoulder fired missile that came and took out these At number 59, it allowed guns to fire in any weather conditions. A percussion cap. Our Blue Ribbon panel found this leaping innovation from 1839 essential to improve.